Hi everyone, it's Lisa from A Simple Season. Over the last couple of years, I think we can all agree that in some form or another, we had some difficulty sometimes getting the things that we needed at the time we wanted them, just due to disruptions of all sorts. And I think because of that happening, a lot of us learned an important lesson, and that was to be prepared for when those situations happen so that we had those things available in our stockpile when we needed them. The reality is that a lot of what we eat is built into a globalized food economy with just a relatively small number of big companies and large-scale farms producing most of what we consume. So any type of disruption with anything along the way causes a problem. And when I was doing research into things that could be in shortage coming up in 2023, a lot of the same things kept coming up. Things like corn and flour and vegetable oils and beef and chicken, all of those kinds of things. So if we take corn as an example, I read that the corn planted this year was 89 and a half million acres, which is a lot of corn, no question about it, but it's 4% less than what was being planted in years past. And you may not think 4% is a big difference, but it is enough to impact what you see on the shelf and the price of it. Now, the thing about food shortages that I want to impress is that it's just that, a shortage. It's not an outage. So it's not that corn won't be available and you won't be able to buy it. It will still be on the shelf, absolutely. It's just a matter of which products are going to be available and how much are we going to pay for them. And also with the conflict going on across the pond with Russia and Ukraine, that is having a really big impact on cooking oils. So things like canola oil, vegetable oil, and sunflower oil, Ukraine produces 50% of the global supply and Russia produces 20%. Those are huge numbers. So that is the reason we are seeing this humongous spike in the price of oils. Putting some oils away is a great idea because if you get them in sturdy containers and you keep them away from heat and light, they will last 24 months past the best buy date. Olive oil in uh, dark glass jars will last a long, long time kept in a cool, dry place. So. If you can store away some oils, if you can get some on sale, go ahead and do it because it will just serve you well in the future in case the price goes up even further if that conflict doesn't get resolved. Also beef and chicken looks like we could see some higher prices with that as well. They've been going up anyway, but cow herds I was just reading have been reduced by about 36%, which is also significant. And we also have the avian flu still going on. And I don't know if that's anything that we really need to be concerned about at this stage, but what I do see happening is just a lot more culling of birds, which is going to drive the price of chicken and eggs up. So the good news is that January 22nd marks the beginning of Chinese New Year. And I remember this time last year, grocery stores had really great deals on all of the foods associated with that holiday. Now, while I don't expect to get the same prices that I did this time last year, I think we should be able to find the best prices of the season for what's available on things like rice and chicken and all of those kinds of items. So let's Let's go to Walmart and see what we can find. This is the kind of thing you want to be getting right now. This is a 15 pound bag of medium grain rice for $16.88. This has gone up in price. I paid $12.99 last year, but we are having some issues with our rice crops this year. So this is still less expensive than the regular price. So I'm going to pick up one of these 15 pound bags. The other things that are going to be a great deal this week are stuff like ramen noodles, soy sauce. We have some dipping sauces here like the plum sauce, honey garlic, 
uh, there's sweet and sour down there and these are the lowest prices they'll probably be all year so if you need any of that stuff now is the time to get it here is another thing that Walmart has on sale this week for Chinese New Year and that is canola oil and vegetable oil down here and the price of it is three dollars off of the regular price I think that's gonna be the lowest price we're going to see for quite some time just because Russia and Ukraine are the largest producers of oils globally so if that conflict is you know continuing to escalate or it doesn't get resolved in the foreseeable future we could potentially see a uh, rise in price for these items going forward so if you can find a sale like this one grab it put it in your pantry as long as it's kept cool and dry you can store this in the pantry and it will be good for two years past the date so stuck up on this if you can find it. Here's another great deal for Chinese New Year's. Mr. Noodles for 27 cents from 47 cents. I never buy these, but if you like these and you buy them, now is the time to get them. I also found these pork dumplings on sale for $2.98 and these are awesome boiled up in a pot and thrown into some soup. They are just delicious and this is a great price for them. So I'm looking at the Walmart flyer for this week and this is what I came in here for. I came in to get the whole chickens for $1.97 a pound. I've walked through the entire meat department and I've talked to the person working here and they don't have any. So I think this is something that we're going to be seeing maybe going forward. They're just going to be getting a limited supply of uh, certain things in and if you're not here the first day, the first minute that they put it out, you're just not going to get it. I also found some cans of chicken broth and the price is 98 cents. These were 88 cents last year. They've gone up a little bit in price, but they still are the lowest price they're going to be this season. So I'm going to get some. If you have a clearance rack in your store, make sure you check it out because look, I found these beautiful bottles of imported balsamic vinegar for half price. So I'm going to pick up a few of these. Here's what a small can of diced tomatoes is going for now, which is $1.47. These were $1.17 a few months ago. And we can clearly see that we're having some issues with the price of vegetable oil because here's your average bag of chips and this is Walmart and it's selling for $4.97. I remember last year you could buy two bags of these for six bucks. And in keeping with the theme that oils are getting more expensive, I'm thinking that mayonnaise might be a good thing for me to pick up an extra one of just because canola oil and soybean oil is listed as one of the main ingredients in mayonnaise. So I think it would be good to have one put back in case the price goes up in the next month or two. And we're seeing the price of sugar gone up again. So this is $2.97 for 4.4 pounds. It was $2.77 a couple of months ago. $1.99 last year and $1.77 the year before that. I found another clearance rack here with some baked goods on it and I'm going to have a look and see what's on here. So there's some almond specialty buns, 27 cents off for 82 cents. I've got some marble rye here for $1.25 and it's 42 cents off. $1.25 for some naan bread. This is only two pieces of naan bread for $1.25. I don't know, nothing here is really catching my eye, so I think I'm gonna pass on this stuff this week. I did find this though, a pumpkin pie on sale for $2.94. That's a pretty good deal. You can't even make it for that. And I looked at the ingredients and they're not terrible, so I'm actually going to pick up one of these. This is a lucky find right here. $2.24 off of this package of mixed vegetables. This is awesome, all cut up. I'm gonna serve this in a bowl with some ranch dip along with dinner tonight, so I'm really happy to have found this. The other thing that I heard might be going up quite a bit in price is citrus fruit. Now, I heard that Florida was having some real issues with their crops, so um, there would be a lot less availability. Where I live, we get a lot of our oranges from California, so I don't haven't seen the prices really be impacted so far for us. I mean, we've got here, we've got three pounds for $2.97. That is not a terrible deal, but if you get your oranges from Florida and you rely on oranges for vitamin C, it might be an idea to maybe put away some frozen orange juice in your freezer. 
or you could just pick up some tang for a shelf stable option that has a lot of vitamin C in it. I'm also gonna pick up some of these peppers because I had a subscriber request for me to make a video on how I make my meat sauce for spaghetti and I need some of these to do it. One of my subscribers, Amy, asked if I would do a video on how I make my meat sauce for spaghetti, so I'm certainly more than happy to oblige. Here it is. It's a very easy recipe and it's so delicious. Now we're gonna let that beef and onion mixture cook for about five minutes until the beef is no longer pink. Then we're going to drain it, put it in the crock pot, and I'll show you the rest of the magic. So now I have my meat in here and I'm going to add in my other ingredients. So I have a chopped red pepper. I'm gonna put in about five cloves of garlic, some pepper to taste, about a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. And now I'm going to add in my jarred sauce. I've poured in two jars already and I'm using the Classico brand this time. That's probably what I use most often, but I've used other kinds too and it's just fine. So I have three jars of sauce in here and I have a couple of secret ingredients that I'm going to add. And one of the secret ingredients is I put in a couple of beef flavored bouillon cubes whenever I'm making meat sauce. So I just take the cubes and I just kind of crumble them up like this and put them in. The second secret ingredient is a little bit of sugar. So typically I add one teaspoon of sugar per jar of sauce that I'm using. So today I'm using three jars. So I'm going to sprinkle in three teaspoons of sugar. And that's all there is to it. And you can mix up the flavors of the jarred sauces if you like. I do that all the time. I mix the Tuscan olive with the fire roasted tomato with the roasted onion and garlic. It's all good. So it's super flexible. And thanks so much for making that request, Amy. I was happy to do it for you. Take care, everyone, and stay well. And we'll catch you in the next one.